Hello, and welcome back to Every Rock Has a Story. I hope you've enjoyed my first 44 episodes of Every Rock Has a Story, where I've told you stories about rocks I've collected from all over the world. But today's story isn't about collecting my rocks. It's about telling you how you can collect your own rocks to start a collection, to add to your collection so that you can start telling your own stories about the earth. Now, you don't have to go all over the world to find rocks. You can find rocks right at home, maybe in your yard or your neighborhood, in your town, maybe for a walk in the woods. But some people live in the city and they tell me, there are no rocks around here, how can I find rocks? Well, I want to remind you that every rock has a story. And in fact, if you've watched all of my videos, you already know that even human-made earth materials tell their own stories. Things like asphalt from episode number seven, or plastic from episode number nine, rusty old nails from episode 21, even concrete cement from episode 36. So where can you go to collect your own rocks? Well, let me give you some examples. You could go to a place like this right here. Or this. Or this. Or this. You could come to a place like this. Or this. Or this. You could come to a brook like this. Or this. I'm here at Castle Rock in Carlisle, Massachusetts, and I'm going to go get some rocks. Let's go. Okay, this is the rock I want to try to sample. I picked it because it's got some really pretty pink colors, some gray shininess, and some silvery bits of mica. And uh, I want to take this home. The problem, this boulder's too big, so I gotta chip off a smaller piece that I can take home to my collection. Good news, I've got my rock hammer with me. This hammer's been all over the world with me, and it's with me today. You can buy a rock hammer like this at the hardware store or even online, or if you get permission from your parents, you might be able to borrow a hammer that they have at home. But before you hammer rocks, you need two other things that are very important safety gloves. You need some good strong gloves to put on to protect your hands and fingers from little bits of rock that might go flying off. One time that happened to me, a piece of rock hit my fingers and it really hurt and I learned the hard way always to wear gloves when I sample. And safety goggles, protective eyewear. You can't just use regular glasses, you need a real pair of goggles like this to keep your eyes safe in case little bits of rock come off. So we're ready to sample now. So. I like the look of what's back here. Look, looks like I might be able to chip that off. So let's give that a crack and see what we might get. Oop, here it comes. Oh, that's a beauty. Take a look. This one is beautiful. Pink and white. I see some glistening silver mica. Maybe even some red tiny garnets too. This is a perfect sample. Okay, we're back at home now, and here's the rock we collected, and it is a beauty. Let me show you up close. The light's a little bit better here. You can see sparkling silvery mica, lots of pink feldspar, and even a bunch of little bitty deep red garnets that I found. I am excited to tell the story of this rock. But before I add it to my collection, I want to label it. I like to use a little bit of whiteout and just dab that on there, and you can see I've done that. Just, uh, I've chosen a surface that I don't care about as much and put a bit of white out, and I've taken my magic marker, and I've written a C for Carlisle, that's the town I collected it in, or it could be the state or the country you collected it in, and then one, because it was the first sample that I collected in Carlisle on our trip. Uh, so now this rock is ready to go, it's ready for my collection, and it's ready for me to tell its story. In my next episode, I will tell you the story of this rock, but I will also tell you how you can explore the stories of your own rocks that you've collected. Remember, everybody can be a scientist. Everyone. Everybody can tell the stories of rocks and explore those stories. It doesn't matter where your rock came from because every rock tells a story. You can tell a great story from a blue schist that's come all the way from Greece, like in episode 29, 
from a green chunk of the mantle that I collected in Arizona, like in episode eight. This one, a beautiful deformed metamorphic rock from New Zealand that I talked about in episode 41. You can even tell a story about a chunk of the road, this really interesting asphalt from episode seven, or even a rusty old nail that you might find in an abandoned lot in the city tells a spectacular story about the earth. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you're excited to collect your own rocks and to start exploring the stories inside them. I hope I see you at my next episode of Every Rock Has a Story. Bye-bye.